Leader One is ready for some aerial combat with today's game, Blue Max, for the Atari 8-bit computers. Let's go ahead and take Blue Max, pop it in my Atari 800XL, and see how it holds up today. Let's go to the game. My copy of Blue Max was published in cartridge format by Atari and carries the copyright year of 1987. However, the game originally came out for the Atari computers in 1983, courtesy of Synapse Software on cassette and disc. The manual opens with the following. It's June 1915. World War I is raging. The Allies are trying to hold on to Europe, and the Royal Air Force is a key weapon against the Axis powers. While flying a reconnaissance mission, Royal Air Force ace Max Chatsworth sees his entire squadron cut down by the enemy. He vows to avenge the loss of his comrades, and on that day personally shoots down seven fighters. The following month, he shoots down 13 more enemy planes. The Axis powers are out to stop Max Chatsworth. They offer their highest flying award, the Blue Max decoration, to anyone who could shoot him down. From then on, Max Chatsworth is dubbed Blue Max by his Royal Air Force mates. Now you are Blue Max, pilot of a fighter-bomber biplane over war-torn Europe. You're the Allies' most dangerous weapon, Blue Max out for revenge. Blue Max is an isometric style shooter for one player only. From the options menu, you could select the difficulty from novice, intermediate, or advanced. Choose normal flight controls where pressing down on the joystick gains altitude and pressing up lowers your altitude or reversing them and choosing to have no gravity or gravity. With gravity, when you release a joystick, you lose altitude. For this review, I will be referencing normal flight controls when explaining the controls. When the game begins, you must wait until your plane automatically reaches a speed of at least 100 miles per hour, at which point you must press down to gain altitude and take off before you run out of runway. If you do run out of runway, or if you try to take off before reaching 100 miles per hour, you will explode, ending your game prematurely, something I learned the hard way when I tried to play the game without reading the instructions first. Once airborne, holding down the button will activate your machine guns with unlimited ammo. Using the button while diving by pressing up on the joystick will drop a bomb from your limited supply. Bombs are the only thing you can use to destroy buildings and bridges. Keeping an eye on your altitude is very important. When you are in a range of 21 to 25 feet, your status screen will change color to a green or brownish color, indicating that you can use your machine guns to destroy small land targets like tanks, other various vehicles, and ships. If you get too low, around 19 feet, you can crash ending your game. The status bar turns yellow when you're in danger of crashing because you're flying too low. The status bar always shows your remaining fuel, remaining bombs, altitude, speed, and score. If a W shows up, it will indicate high winds that can push you around a bit. A P indicates an enemy plane is approaching, while an asterisk indicates that an enemy plane is directly above. When you and an enemy plane are at the same altitude, the status bar will turn blue, indicating you can now shoot them down with your machine guns with the right aim. But beware, enemy planes can shoot you too. An R indicates a runway is near. When this happens, you can press the button to lower your landing gear, at which point the R will be replaced with an L, indicating that you can land by pressing up while over the runway. You can crash by landing too early or late, or if you didn't press the button to lower your landing gear. You also want to make sure you leave enough room to take off. Once you land, you will automatically get refueled, bombs replenished, and repairs done. The more you need, the longer it takes. However, while this takes place, enemy planes could show up and drop bombs, possibly hitting you and in your game. If you want to take off before the ground crew is finished, simply press the button. Once the ground crew is finished, or once you press the button, you will automatically gain speed again, and you can take off once you hit at least 100 miles per hour, just like at the beginning of the game. Your game automatically ends if you crash into something, including enemy planes at the same altitude. You can also crash the game by bombing your own hangar by your runway. However, you can take several hits from enemy fire, although it can damage parts of your plane as shown on your status bar. The letter F indicates a fuel leak. A B indicates damage to your bomb gears, meaning that sometimes bombs will not drop when you press the button. The letter M means your maneuvering has been affected and you won't be able to change directions as fast. A G means that your machine guns have been damaged and won't always fire. All of these damages can be repaired while landed after you've been refueled and had your bombs reloaded. Throughout the game, you will be brought near rivers and into cities. There's a lot you can destroy, but your main targets are flashing cars and planes, red ships, and buildings and bridges that have a red target over them. 
The number you need to hit to progress is not indicated, but once you've destroyed enough of these primary targets, you will be told to land with a series of beeps. After you take off again, you will be sent into the heart of enemy territory to destroy a set of red and blue buildings. If you miss any of them, you will be given the chance to land and reattempt destroying the ones you missed. If you destroy them all and land, you beat the game. Win or lose, you will be given one of five rankings, the highest two which can only be gained by beating the game. And each ranking has four classes, with four being the highest. Scoring-wise, you get 10 points for destroying ships, vehicles, anti-aircraft battery and tanks, 50 points for destroying bridges and buildings, 100 points for destroying planes or the buildings and bridges with targets over them, and 300 points for destroying flashing blue planes, flashing blue cars, and red ships. Graphically speaking, this is a really sharp-looking 8-bit game. Sound and music-wise, the game features a very nice rendition of Rural Britannia which is also the theme song of my favorite tag team, the British Bulldogs. And the game also has some nice sound effects, including some rock and explosions. Family friendly wise, the game features basic flying action and would most likely get an E for everyone or an E10 and up rating if released a day. I will say that being able to destroy what looked to be yellow school buses in some of my games did make me feel a little uncomfortable. Currently at PriceChine.com, the game has a value of $13 loose, $25 complete, and $45 new. So what did I think of Blue Max for the Atari 8-bit computers? I knew this game had a cult following of sorts, but my expectations weren't that high going in. I typically just don't like isometric games, and when I first tried it, I couldn't even take off. But as I played the game, I found myself having more and more fun, especially as I got more used to the game. Having one life can make it frustrating when you get bombed on a runway, which honestly is rare, or unexpectedly crash into something just because you lost focus for a few seconds. But it also adds to the realism. It's a shame you can't bomb with a second button due to the single button joystick, as there were times I meant to drop a bomb, but I didn't. However, the rest of the controls were pretty solid. The length of the game is perfect, it could be completed in 15 to 20 minutes, and the challenge for me was just right. And most importantly, the game is fun and gets more enjoyable the more time you give it. So where am I going to rank Blue Max? This one is going right to the top. Seriously, if you like shooters at all, you need to give it an honest try. Thank you Jack Trammell and Atari for re-releasing this one as a cartridge in the late 80s so I could play it in 2020. Blue Max requires some time to learn, but is also one of the best Atari 8-bit games out there. But that's just my opinion. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Also, please like, share, and subscribe. Follow me both on the Facebook and the Twitter. Click the bell so you don't miss any future videos. And sign up at patreon.com slash gamer, just like Superstar Rick R, Marvelous Mark T, and The Judge Joe T, who nominated today's game to support the show and gain access to exclusive perks. Thank you for giving me a little part of your day, and I look forward to seeing you next time on the next episode of The No Gamer. Take care, and always watch your altitude.